Part two is the more useful part of the theorem. I would say just roughly you'll use part two a hundred to a thousand times more often than they'll use part one. It's just, um, this is really the bread and butter of calculus moving forward. What does it say? It says if F is continuous on closed interval a B and capital F is any antiderivative of F on the interval a B closed interval, then the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to big F of b, the antiderivative, minus the big F of a, the antiderivative. Why is this such a big deal? Well, it gives us an exact way to calculate area once and for all. Okay, so now I've switched back to just a generic function, f of x. Say I had any function f of x, and I wanted to know what the area under that function is between these points a and b. Okay, well, we could sit around with middle school geometry or high school geometry all day and try to compute this area. We're never going to get it for a, a function that's fancy enough, right? We know circles and rectangles and all that, but nothing tells us the area under this thing until now. And now it just tells us that this area is capital F, right? This area, whatever, whatever the function is, you integrate it and you say F of B minus F of A. So all you have to know is the antiderivative of F of X little f of x at those two endpoints, and you have magically computed this entire area under the curve, which is a huge thing to be able to do, right? And you'll repeat this exercise as you go forward in your mathematics career, right? You'll do it for polar coordinates, cylindrical coordinates. You'll do it in three dimensions in Calc 3, right? It goes on and on, but it's the same idea. You can use the antiderivative or the integral to compute various areas, volumes, etc. Let's try an example. Here we have the integral from 0 to 1 of the quantity x plus square root of x dx. So this x plus square root of x is our f of x, that's our function. And what this integral from 0 to 1 is telling us is the area under the curve of f of x, or between the curve and the x-axis, as x goes from 0 to 1. Now note that if it's above the x-axis, that's going to stay positive. And if it's below the x-axis, that's going to be negative, right? Using the antiderivative as the integral still maintains that same quality of integration that we saw with areas. Okay, let's do it. Well, how do we compute this using the antiderivative? Let's just change it up a little bit. So integral from zero to one, let's think of this as x to the one plus x to the one half dx. And then we'll use the power rule for, for integrals, which just tells us to add one and divide. So when we integrate this thing, this becomes x to the one plus one, so two over two, plus x to the one half plus one, so that's three halves, over three halves, which I'll write as two thirds times it there. When you're dividing by a fraction, just multiply by the reciprocal. And now we don't write plus c, because this is a very definite thing here. So instead of writing plus c, we drew this, we draw this vertical line like so, that's not a very good line, something like this. And then we say from zero to one, which means we're evaluating it from these two limits of integration. And then when we go to do it, it's top minus bottom. So top minus bottom. So we'll, we'll plug in one and evaluate it minus, and we'll plug in zero and evaluate it. Okay, so plugging in one gives, let's see, one half plus two thirds. These are nice numbers to work with minus parentheses, we plug in zero. Well, that's all just going to be zero. Okay, so one half plus two thirds. We can get a common denominator here, three over three, two over two, that gives us a common denominator of six. So the downside is there is a little bit of fraction work at the end of these uh, integrals when you're using the fundamental theorem of calculus part two, which we'll just refer to from this point on as just doing integrals. We use it so commonly, we don't, we don't say it's the fundamental theorem of calculus part two, we just call it working the integral. So this gives three plus four all over six, which equals seven sixths. So this is a very direct way to compute an area that before calculus would have been nearly impossible to compute. So it really does just blow the whole thing open and allow us to compute all kinds of areas now that we can use the antiderivative.